Born in 1958, started school in 1959, Fresh Question based over acting CGN's credential. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. On Monday, following the resignation of Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, Olukaide Ariwola was sworn in by the President Muhammad Buhari as the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, CGN. CGN. Ariwola is expected to serve in acting capacity until confirmation by the National Judicial Council, NJC, and the National Assembly. At a swearing-in ceremony in the presidential villa, the acting CJN swore to be faithful and to bear true allegiance to the federal government, as well as defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. However, fresh questions have been raised over the credentials of Ariwola and particularly on the date which he began school. Born in 1958 and started school in 1959, Ariwala was born in East Senyi mm -hmm. Oyo State on August, 20, on August 22, 1958. According to his credentials, he began his primary education less than a year later in 1959 at the local authority demonstration school, Oluwali, in his hometown. He would spend eight years in school before graduating in 1967. He then moved to Muslim Modern School in the same town from 1968 to 1969 before graduating to Ansa Udin High School, Saki area of Oyo for secondary education. He earned his law degree from the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, in 1980. And a year later, he was called to the Nigerian bar and got enrolled as a solicitor and advocate of the Supreme Court. Reportedly ill. Before Ariwala was sworn, into his new role inside us within the EPS court, told the cable that some Northern justices were against his appointment on the grounds that the 63 year old is allegedly battling health issues. The alleged that the illness might affect Ariola's performance as the leader of the Supreme Court, just as it did the immediate past CGN. Why are we bent on making life like this for ourselves? Why? Why are we bent on making life like this? Huh. The same issue we are talking about, um, the flag bearer of the old progressives. Now, the same issue again for another sensitive post. Okay. If Nigeria do not deal with age falsification in the civil service, the country will not move an inch. Of course, forget about his health status, even if he serves only for one day. It is his turn. We in Emilio Contain. The problem should be his age issue. Hmm. Problem. This age issue have gone a long way in producing the mission return in the country's production life. But people do not want to see that at all. They don't want to hear it at all, at all. And that is a very big problem for us. People. People whose production capacity have drastically reduced continue to occupy position as a result of age falsification. The result of the collapse which we are experiencing in every aspect of socio-political fabrics of the nation. If nothing is done, I am sorry, the country will fall into a recoverable pit. My dear, this matataya mio. You see, eh? The thing is, this issue of age falsification... People are looking as if, as a, you know, mm -hmm. nothing soap. There is no problem. It is all good. It is all fine. Why? Because of one reason or the other. I keep saying this. Let's not even go too far. The elections are coming. Do you know that age falsification is one of the issues that people are talking about? The issues surrounding the fact that uh, Tinubu who is the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress. The fact that he cannot find his credential, his first school living certificate, which is the testimonial, and the secondary school. People are not seeing the issue behind, as in the real issue. They are coming out to say, eh, he no go school, he goes. And I'm saying, it is not even the fact that he no go school. There is no way that Tunumbo would have, you know, not went to primary school, not went to secondary school, 
and he will now fly. Nobody should do that. He will now just jump to, it's not possible. Why he's, yes, I'm using him as a case study now because it is another place where for vacation and people are sweeping it under the carpet. Why? If this man become the president, ah, I'll go enjoy you. Ah, he has promised my great granddaughter job. He has promised my father ministerial position. He has furnished one of my promise one of my uncle. And then my uncle said, if you just give him that ministerial appointment, that is going to connect me to people who are going to employ me. You know, because of waiting, we go get. We go allow. Say we go day inside river. Soap go enter into our eyes. Another issue don't come up again. No. The thing is, sometimes eh, history will keep repeating itself until we learn. Meaning, if for instance you make a mistake, hmm? you make a mistake before, do you know that the mistake, the issue, that particular scenario might not present itself as that one? Let's say for instance you're cooking and your food get burnt. Maybe your food get burnt because of one particular mistake. Do you know your food will continue to get burnt until you take note of that mistake and say no? I'm not going to do it. Which means, if something similar is about to happen, you will know, ah, now this thing I do will make my, will make my food lose burn. I'm just doing a scenario. Nigerians, we have started making the same mistake again. We did this mistake. I am, I'm using Tinubu as a case study because Tinubu is on. We are walking right into it. And some people, because this man, if he entered, yeah, he helped me. He helped my father. He helped my brother. They are closing their mouth. Another issue has come up again. When are we going to learn? Experiences. We call this history experiences because we have it in our mind, in our head. As a person, you are doing this thing and it just flashes. Eh? I don't do this thing before. See where I land me. That is history. That means you don't know. Say, if you don't like this, this is the result. You don't play for your head already. But the thing is that when it comes to, because... How am I going to put it now? Because we are, everybody cannot be the same. People decide to sweep it under the carpet. This issue of age. <laughs> hey, if we no learn from history, history will continue to repeat itself. We have somebody who is the CGFR of Nigeria, the commander-in-chief. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces, that is the president, who in age, we don't see how in age affect us because of he's not always sound he's always frail he's always falling ill this man do you know that 1001 things that happen during his tenure he doesn't know up to 900 of them why because he is always jetting out of the country for one problem for one for one a treatment or another we are working right into this one now Another very sensitive position where we say they're not supposed to use and play. When are we going to learn to use merit as the measuring tool? When? When? On this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. And until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.